what's the mission of, of Helping Hands? First of all, we're a Christ-centered organization uh, ministry that is helping people come out of difficult situations. Okay? Difficult. Notice I said out of, but the important thing, too, is, is we're not just looking to bring people out of something. Because we have to tell some people sometimes when they call and are looking for help, we're, we're, not a, we're not a shelter that just helps you out of a difficult situation. We're helping them. We're here to help people get out of and into. Amen. Okay, Out of difficult situations into desirable situations, into delightful situations. And another way we, another way we can say we want to bring them out of the pit okay, and into peace, into provision, into prosperity. You know, pr- prosperity is a biblical term, right? Third John 2, what it, you know, Apostle John was praying for Gaius, and he says, I pray that you prosper in how many things? All things, even as your soul prospers, okay? Our mind, our, our will, our emotions. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring them out of the difficult situations and into a place where they can prosper spirit, soul, and body. And, and so out of, into is, 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 our, is our mission, and we're helping hands. Um, we primarily, well, we, we, we help men, women, and children. Um, and uh, just, they come out of different situations. Jail, rehab, homelessness, streets, abusive situations, um, and other things like uh, Mike's uh, mom and sister and some of, the, of uh, your nieces and, and, and nephew, nephew. They were here. They stayed with Helping Hands temporarily. And I'm going to show you some slides later of facilities and all that kind of stuff. But they were here because uh, they were in the panhandle and they got displaced by the hurricane. So we, were, we had an a, a empty apartment that we were able to let them stay in for a little while. You know, one of the things that, were, you know, I, I was first a teacher. And I just, you know, I would say as a teacher, I'm like, man, I've got my pulse on the world because I just know what kids go through. But working with helping hands, I just didn't know. And, you know, a lot of people that we see with addictions, prostitution, jail time, and so forth. Man, if you only knew how they grew up. And there's a lot of people out there. And that's one of the things I want you to know. There's a lot of people out there like that. And, you know, Miss Joyce working at, at, at the prison, she could give you some statistics that you may or may not know. It's just crazy. So I wanted to share that. But I wanted to say, you know, too, as far as, because you know, this is being recorded, we have some teenagers here. The devil can get anybody. It doesn't matter if you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth or without or whatever. You, you, get, on the, you get on the road of compromise, and it's a slippery slope. And addictions and destructive decisions and behaviors can take hold of anybody. Okay? We wrestle not against flesh or blood. And that we isn't just if you woke up, if you, 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 know, you were raised with a neglectful or abuseful parents and so forth. There's generational things that are passed on. And um, so I want you to be aware that there's a lot of people out there. When you see, their, you see their choices and their decisions and you're turned off or you're angry or whatever, you just, you get it. So, um, you know, I wanted to point that out. So, uh, and then I want to share a few things, hopefully. Um, so let's just kind of go through the, uh, the slides, Andrea. Let's, let's, uh, we're going to look now a little bit about the how, how we help. Um, we, have, we have two apartment units. This one is um, uh, near, the, near our offices and so forth. We have two, 10 units there. Um, that's uh, basically used for mixed uh, uh, groups. You could have a family. You could have men. Uh, we have women and children there, too. But like I said, we primarily are, are women and children. And so the next slide, Andrew, we have a, a, a Sunbright Apartments. Um, this is where uh, all, it's all women and children. This is where um, Autumn lives now and where Cherry lived and so forth. Um, so two different complexes. Um, we have, they come fully furnished, the apartments. Um, you know, market range, you're probably looking at what, seven, $800 rent a month. Um, of course, they don't, they don't, they don't pay that. 
um, and, and so forth, our, our residents. Um, but fully furnished, and, and, uh, and Nigel, one of, uh, one of our guys, he says, tell them that they, there's a washer and dryer in there, too. Some people get, sort of, oh, really, a washer and dryer, too? Um, and, uh, you know, washer and dryer and, and so forth. So um, that's, that's what they step into, okay? Um, and then and let's, let's see what's the next slide. Um, as far as support, uh, a, a thrift store was mentioned. We used to have two, and we're consolidating to one. Um, if you're ever out near on top of the world and stuff, if you want to, if you like thrift stores, um, we're on the opposite side. I think it's out, it's past on top of the world, I think. Um, but anyways, we have a thrift store. Um, that top left picture was, you know, mentioned like, you know, Autumn said, we didn't, I, I didn't have anything but the clothes on my back. Okay, so we, food and, and, and toiletries and stuff we, we need to be able to provide and so forth. And that's, we, we, we count on other people to, to donate those things. If you look at the middle, middle small picture, um, that's Nigel. He works with Helping Hands, but that's a, that was a group of people, and there's blue bags. They were bringing in food for the for the pantry and so forth. And then um, Autumn mentioned. I think somebody mentioned a car, cherry, or something. From time to time, we have uh, cars donated to us. Uh, that's something else that that, that is helpful, um, so that they don't have to. Uh, so residents don't have to take a bus and so forth. And that's you know in and out as far as how we can do that. But we do get cars donated to us sometimes. And, um, okay, next slide. So just some kind of helping hands life's pictures. Uh, you know, on the right there we have um, uh, a mom and her, her son. And, uh, and on the left, that's my dad in the middle. He's, he's the one that started helping hands. And that's brother and sister there. They've, they've moved on. They're no longer, none of these are with us now. But um, that's just some pictures. Okay, I mentioned Mike's mom earlier. That's his, uh, his, his mom and, and sister. And just kind of a cool thing, I was, I was hoping Sue would be here because I got a good picture of her next. But um, they're, they're twins, right? The younger ones are twins? Yes. Okay. So, and then Lauren's not with us anymore, but she has twins, okay? Um, and we've, we've had babies lately. We've had two moms that we've had that have you know, given birth and so forth. Um, but... At one time, we had Lauren staying with us, and then Sue. They're both they both had twins. You know, twins are supposed to be rare, right? And so we were laughing the other day because um, Joyce is a twin. Uh, this was, but J Judy went there. I don't think we were laughing. But uh, so in, oh, it was so in the room we had Judy and Joyce, and we had these two, and then we had Rain and Snow, which you'll see one of their you'll see their pictures in a little bit. So we had three sets of twins in in this in this little room. So. That was pretty cool. All right. Um, so, you know, we mentioned, um, so residents come to us with different needs and different situations, but the one thing that we look for in common with, that they all have is that they want to move forward with God. They want to, we're looking for people that, that want to, you know, learn his word and, 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 and have him as Lord and so forth. And um, so, that that's the most important thing that we we do is, is is I believe is discipleship. We've got the housing, we've got the provision, we help them with employment, and and transportation and so forth. But obviously, the most important thing is is discipleship. And so we have things like Monday morning Monday night ladies Bible study, Wednesday morning devotions, okay, um, and then we have Friday morning worship and prayer. Um, you know, Wednesday is kind of you know. It's teaching, but we're also, you know, if the Holy Spirit moves, we want we want the Holy Spirit to be able to do things and so forth. But so, in the cycle of those things, we're trying to give them the opportunity to be renewed and to be refreshed. Some may need to be refreshed. Some need to, may need to be renewed in their minds and so forth. And so we have uh, those things. Um, so the top left, you could call the upper room. This is above our office. Um, if you look behind the, so you, I've got my dad and then the, and then the redheaded, she's, there's a door back there and they just come up the stairs and that, we're upstairs, so we call it the upper room. So that's on the left, maybe a devotional time and so forth. On the right um, was probably a special occasion with Monday night, we had, had a meal there. Um, and then Joyce's favorite, Pastor Scott, he was, he was, he's from Ireland, he was here recently and uh, so that, that's, prob that's probably a good picture of him. He doesn't stand still when he's preaching. He, he's a preacher, and, and uh, he's got his Irish accent, and it, it, it's a blast to be with him. So, uh, again, those are some things there. Let's see, what's on the next slide? Um, funds, uh, Sky Zone one time gave us, I can't remember if it was free or a discounted price. We got to go, we got to take all the, was it free? 
we got to go to Sky Zone. Um, um, so we got some more residents here. Um, Katie Grace stays with us. She doesn't stay with, with Helping Hands. But um, this is the other twin. You notice the redheaded. So Rain is the redheaded, and this is Snow. She's the, she's the other twin. Uh, I put this one up here because Chris knows the, uh, at least one of these people up here, Pastor Chris does, so I put them up there as you know, their former residents. This is my favorite slide that I made. So this is Sue. She's got um, her twins with her. But the, the, the way out, I mean, that's just a good picture of the two, don't you all think? This is the, but the, the way this spoke to me was, so this is at First Assembly. Is this Pastor Scott? Pastor Jeff, all right, get the name. All right. So, anyways, to me, this represents new life, and with that new life, curses are broken, and and uh, so, and we're seeing that. Sue is another one that we're really proud of, and and so forth, and and so, anyways, I just really like that one. Isn't that awesome? All right, um, this is just for fun. Uh, this is uh, Rochelle here. She, she has a, um, a ministry called um, Feed the Need, and she goes to schools and so forth and, and plants uh, uh, raised garden beds and so forth. And so she came to Sunbright and built us a, uh, uh, a garden bed and, 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 and provided plants. And Autumn ha is the chief gardener. She, she's the chief gardener. And... Uh, so that some of that, that's, that's, this, that's right, that's current. That's what's in their uh, fall garden right now. Is that a zucchini on the right? All right, okay. So we're, we're happy that they're, that they're into that. We, we, had one, we had one a few years ago, and, and there just wasn't anybody to, to man it and ended up going to kaput. So how, how can I help? Um, again, we're trying to help residents avoid, but also to replace. Avoid the things that got them where they were, but not just avoid them, replace them with the Word of God and the Spirit of, of God in their life, okay? Um, so we want them to recognize the wrong, and we want to pursue the right, okay? Cherry recognized by the Spirit of God, thank God, that it wasn't good for her to go back into that environment that she was familiar with, okay? So she had to recognize that and then she had to replace that with something else. She had to pursue that with something else. And so that's the out of and the, and the into. And go ahead and do the next slide. How can you help? I w this is the point where we're just, you know, we, we, sh we showed you our bright spots. But not every spot's a bright spot. And we face challenges. We don't have a 100% success rate. This week was actually a very difficult week as far as um, Joyce's part-time pay and full-time work. And she's the, she's the, I mean, you know, she doesn't like for me to point her out, but she's. So, and she's had to deal with some stuff this week. Um, and so I, in presenting the fruit, I don't want you to be naive to the fact that, um, there's some fruit that we don't want to see that we do see. And we are, as a, as a ministry, we are pressing forward into becoming more effective in our discipleship. We want to see them delivered. We want to see them healed. We want to see them discipled. And so we want to come to a, a better place in, in, in what we're doing. Because, you know, I was sharing the other day, John 8, 31 and 32. You know, Jesus said, if you, if you abide in my word, you will be my disciples. And then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Some people think make the mistake of, oh, I heard that, that made sense, now I'm free. No. It's when you abide in God's word. Then you know experientially the freedom that is in Christ Jesus. And so we want to be more effective in bringing them to the, because the knowledge of the truth, the experiential knowledge of the truth will not only set you free, it will keep you free. And so we're working on, on, on being better. And that's where you can come in, in, into play. Cause, so I had that verse up there, Colossians 4, 2, 12. Can you put it back? 
it talks about Epaphras. My prayer is, Lord, give us more Epaphrases. Give us more Epaphras. What, what did Epaphras do? Epaphras, first of all, he was a part, a part of the church of Colossians. And if you read Colossians, they were a healthy church at the time it was being written. And this is one of the reasons why they were a healthy church. Because they had an Epaphras that got down on their knees and prayed fervently that Christ would be formed in them. They would walk in the fullness of Christ and so forth. So if you're, if you're a prayer, if you're given to pray, pray for help and hands. Pray for the residents. Uh, one of the things that I, I pray for regularly is, is the fear of the Lord. The Bible tells us that God will impart the fear of the Lord in their hearts. And if they have the fear of the Lord in their hearts, they're going to they're gonna run from sin and they're going to run to God. And so uh, we would really covet your prayers. Um, next slide. Because we need discernment. The leadership needs discernment. We have to discern uh, who, who we're going to bring in. We have to discern if, 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 if they're about to get off track and back to, to drugs or back to men or, or whatever it is. We have to discern, and that falls, anyways, Joyce quit, doesn't like me mention her, but we, we need discernment, okay? Um, the leadership does, and obviously the, the, the residents too. Um, we're about discipleship, and um, I have that word dedication up there is because um, that's the end result we want. We want, in the residents, we want them dedicated to living with the Lord, walking after God, leaving us, and going and living that prosperous life that, that, that we were talking about. And so then I have new nature, new life. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's, it's not uh, uncommon for people to come looking for help and them to be, to be led into a first-time relationship with the Lord. And when they do, they become new creations in Christ Jesus, don't they? But the new life is not automatic. So this arrow is the things that we need to do in between, you know, we're, we're new in spirit, but our minds have to be renewed. And so this arrow is, is where we're trying to focus on leading them to that, that new life. And so, again, prayers, financial help. I put some flyers uh, in the back where you can, you know, see the website address and so forth.